Welcome everybody, my name is Andreas Meyer and I am teaching this semester Pattern Recognition at Friedrich Alexander University Erlangen Nuremberg. So we are teaching this class as an advanced class for machine learning. We will focus on classical methods of machine learning. It will involve quite a bit of math and we aim to link math, statistics, probability theory, together with machine learning and we will talk about linear methods up to kernel methods that will involve high dimensional spaces. So I think the background that you get in this class is crucial for understanding of course classical machine learning but also for methods of deep learning. So all that you see here is being published under a Creative Commons for a zero license. So you are welcome to reuse any of the material that we present here. And we will also publish all of these videos on our own system, which is called FAU TV and as well as on YouTube. So I will post also the links in the description of this video. So this would be the right point to subscribe to those videos because then you will see all of the videos that we will publish throughout the entire semester. So with that being said, I think we are going ahead to some exciting lecture over the next semester. So looking forward to demonstrating pattern recognition to you. We want to start today by talking about the introduction. So pattern recognition in Erlangen has actually quite some history. The pattern recognition lab has been founded by Professor Niemann, who you can see here on the left hand side. The lab was then later continued by Professor Hornegger, who is now the president of the university. You can see that quite a bit of what we are demonstrating here in this class goes back very back to the roots to the class that Professor Niemann was already teaching. Then there was a major rehaul of the entire lecture that was done by Professor Hornegger. The slides, as you can see here in this final presentation form, have been created by Stefan Steidl. So he did a lot of the contributions that you see here, a lot of the different figures and animations that you will see in the next couple of slides have been created by him. Dr. Steidl unfortunately passed in 2018. Stefan Steidl has been an amazing scholar, a dedicated researcher and a very good friend. So I am very happy that I can share the slides created by him with you today in this video, as well as for the entire lecture. So let's talk a bit about the topic of pattern recognition. This is the classical pattern recognition pipeline. So you see that we start typically by recording some signal. It could be an image or a speech signal that is then pre-processed, which means that the signal is essentially preserved in its original shape. So it can be played back if it's an audio signal after the pre-processing. If it's an image signal, you can still look at the image after pre-processing. And after that, we perform feature extraction and the feature extraction is used to create meaningful numbers out of the signals. And these signals are then used in the classification stage such that they can be assigned to an abstract class Omega Kappa. This entire pattern recognition system, we essentially split up into two lectures. The first one is introduction to pattern recognition. So here we talk about the entire feature extraction, typical image and speech processing features, as well as some simple classifiers such that you can build your own classification systems. 
The class that you're listening to today is looking into classification and the training part here in depth. And we will talk about many of the advanced methods in machine learning. So you can see here our lecture topics. We start with general theory about the Bayes theorem and probabilistic theory. Then we go ahead and talk about the naive Bayes classifier. We will also talk about logistic regression. And this will be followed by discriminant analysis as well as perceptrons. We will talk also a bit about multilayer perceptrons and neural networks. Then we will talk about support vector machines and of course, all of the time, the points of norms and optimization will be very important for us as our kernel methods. And in the end, we will look into the expectation maximization algorithm as well as boosting and we will talk about other boost. So you could say, what is pattern recognition good for? Well, I already hinted at that you can do, of course, speech recognition. You can do image processing and image recognition to classification. We will see that fingerprint identification is a typical such problem, but also optical character recognition falls into the class of pattern recognition algorithms. And these things are, of course, important in industrial workflows for quality control, for sorting. And you see today all kinds of machines from barcode readers to machines that sort your bins when you return them to the supermarket. All of them employ pattern recognition techniques and you will learn the essential methods to actually build algorithms that are able to solve these tasks in this class here. Let's have a look at an example and we'll try to talk about a rather simple one. And here we want to determine the kind of iris flowers according to images. And for example, for this iris, we have the iris versicolor and the iris virginica. And both of them have to be separated into two different classes because they are actually two different kinds of flowers. So here, of course, we have a not so risky task. Yeah? If you confuse them, then you will not cause such great harm. But if you are actually running a flower shop, you will be very much interested in this task because you might be confusing those and then your customers will become very upset. So let's look at an example how you actually can extract features from the images of the flower. And in order to do that, you have to understand a bit how flowers are actually structured. And in particular, you have different parts of the flower. And we will now look into the perianth and in particular into petal and sepal leaves because they are very important in order to distinguish the different kinds of iris flowers of our example. So here you can see that we can now kind of bring these very abstract images into a kind of vector space where we're able to describe those flowers. So we essentially set up the camera and take some images as you've seen before. And then we want to extract characteristics. And these characteristics are able to make distinctions between the different species of iris flowers. So here you see that quite important features are sepal length, as well as sepal width. And of course, the same is true for the petal leaves. So also there, the length and the width is really crucial. And then of course, color is a distinguishing factor in order to differentiate the different species of iris flowers. So now we somehow have to extract those features. And in order to do that, we follow our pattern recognition pipeline. So we do some pre-processing here. For example, it could be the segmentation operation. So we isolate the flowers from one another and also from the background. So this would be the pre-processing step. Then we need some feature extraction where we extract the best features for a single flower image. And this is, of course, a very good way of reducing the dimensionality and the data that we have to deal with. Imagine you have an image with uh, 1024 times 1024 pixels. 
then this will be already more than a million dimensions of variables that can change. And if we go to the aforementioned five features, of course, we can reduce the dimensionality of the problem a lot. And this will, of course, help us building our classifiers and reducing the data dimension. So in the end, then we want to classify and we classify these features then, these low dimensional representation of our image content with a trained classifier. So if we do that for a certain feature, then we end up, for example, with the following case. So we have the sepal length and here we see the two different kinds of iris flowers. And you see that the sepal length alone is not so great to split the two. So there is actually quite a bit of overlap between the distribution of the different lengths. And this is probably not the best criterion to separate the two, but of course it will at least allow us to separate them in some cases. Then we can also look at the different feature and that could be, for example, the sepal width. And here you see that the overlap is even higher. So it's rather difficult also to separate the two kinds of flowers with this kind of distribution. Now you see that when we kind of do a decision, it will essentially imply a certain risk of misclassification. And of course, if you do misclassification, you potentially incur some cost. So for example, here the cost could be a customer that is not very content. He gets angry, goes to social media and posts really angry stuff about you. So you may want to avoid this. And actually, typically you can map also those risks into some kind of value. So if the customer is very unhappy and he starts damaging you, you can, for example, try to measure the cost in Euro. So now we want to do, of course, a decision that minimizes this misclassifications and therewith also reduces the cost. So how can we do that in a multidimensional space? Well, of course, we can use the two different features that we looked at and map them into a two dimensional space. So now we are describing the different images of flowers in this kind of graph. And you can see this is a two dimensional vector. So we have the vector X transpose that is given as X1 and X2. And with X1, we are now denoting the sepal width in centimeter. And with X2, we are denoting the sepal length in centimeter. So now you see that the two variables, if we plot them as this kind of scatter plot, they kind of allow us to separate the two kinds of flowers. And you see also that the separation here, if we model this as a linear decision boundary, it's not perfect, but it kind of works. Of course, we can also choose different models. And one thing that we could, for example, do is we choose simply the nearest neighbor. But if we just take the next neighboring observe data point, you see that we kind of get a very noisy kind of decision boundary. Here you can see that the direct neighbors are of course assigned to the respective decision. And you see these kind of clusters appearing that are indicated here with the two colors. So this is probably not an ideal decision boundary because in this case, and the generalization is likely to be very poor. And this then is also often referred to as overfit. What we can do is we can smooth the decision. And one thing that we could do, for example, is choose the K nearest neighbors. And then we can probably get a much more stable classification result. So we've seen now that we can deal with feature extraction. This is essentially recording the input signal. You essentially take the camera, a microphone, even an x-ray signal, and then you digitize it, you sample and quantize it. And then you do some pre-processing and extract meaningful features. This 
is actually the topic of introduction to pattern recognition. So at this point, we assume that we already know that we are able to compute meaningful features. If you're interested in how to compute those features, have a look at the entire class introduction to pattern recognition, and there you will learn how to extract those features. Because what we will be doing in this class and in the next video is look into the actual classification. We will look in the next video into some postulates of pattern recognition, and this will then be followed by many different kinds of machine learning approaches that will build on top these feature extraction methods. So this already brings us to the end of this first video of the introduction to our new lecture pattern recognition. And you see that we will mainly focus on the classification methods. So the advanced methods of machine learning, the feature extraction part you can learn about in introduction to pattern recognition. So yeah, let's hope that you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to see you again in the next one. Thank you very much and goodbye.